This is uh, Wes from Next Venture Motorsports. I'm Dan from Next Venture Motorsports. Uh, we are here at the Next Venture Motorsports new R&D bay. We have lift. We just expanded into a new building. And, yeah, we had to get a lift. And, well, we also had to put UHMW on the belly skids that are on this JT. So the skids had to come off because we installed them without it. Because they received the prototype. So I mentioned to Jan. Hey, since we're you're taking the skids off, let's do an install video. You guys have been asking for it? Here it is. So before we get into the install video, we wanted to get down here underneath the rig and show you guys some of the features of this belly skid system and go over some of the most frequently asked questions that we get on these guys. So. This system is primarily made out of 5052 aluminum because we're going for weight savings and we're also going for strength. And there's a reason that this particular alloy is preferred among so many sheet metal manufacturers. And it's because this alloy actually forms so very well without becoming brittle. And that's a big concern with some alloys of aluminum is uh, as you cycle it, as you hit it with a five to 7,000 pound vehicle, uh, are you going to see cracks propagate or anything like that at your forming lines? And we really like to choose bending over welding because in this heat affected zone on either side of the weld, you'll lose anywhere from 50 to 58% of your strength in these welded areas. So that is why you're gonna see so many uh, formed flanges on this system. In comparing this to your factory skid, which does get removed over here, as you might notice, uh, there's quite a bit of difference in the length of the flanges that we've gone with. We really like to make these flanges as long as we can. It gives you a lot more surface area here that engages with the frame rail, which is ideal because you're going to be transferring a lot of your you know, impacts and weight up to your frame rail through the metal here and if you look at the factory skids they've only got this little tiny pocket here pretty much enough to wrap around uh, where this bolt hole is going to be where the mounting point is and uh, one of our frequently asked questions is well now that you've got all this extra material here is it going to be compatible with my long arm kit so this was originally designed to be compatible with the rock crawler suspension setup. We do long arms on the front and on the JLs, the long arms in the back as well. If you're looking at other systems, you might have to do a little bit of trimming towards the back here in order to get some of those brackets on. So we do replace a lot of the cross members. This big one behind the transfer case gets a nice heavy duty upgrade, as well as all of our other brackets that are now in the system because we are replacing the factory fuel tank skid and the brackets for holding the factory fuel tank into the vehicle are built into that factory skid. When we remove that, we need something else to hold this in place. So all of these brackets are laser cut and formed very similarly out of quarter inch steel, however. So if we go to the very bottom surface of our system, and this is the surface that sees the most amount of action, you probably noticed this 3 8 of an inch thick uh, black plastic at the bottom, and you might be wondering what that is. This is our UHMW option, uh, Ultra High Molecular Weight PE. It is a type of plastic, it's uh, almost like a cutting board, and we put it down here because it slips and slides so well. And you'll notice that we've got it adhered to our skid plate system, with countersunk hardware. That way it's all flush. All these bolts are either gonna be flush or slightly recessed, and you're not gonna be able to catch anything on the bottom of your rig, as it really plays to the strengths of this material. And the reason we went with something that slips and slides so well is because if you're getting up onto an obstacle uh, and you're catching on something with your factory skids, you might have noticed hey, I've got to reattempt this obstacle X amount of times just to get past, you know, this little bolt head or something. And in doing that, we've actually noticed, I've noticed on the trail, we might 
not have to make so many attempts to get up and over a hard obstacle because it's able to just scoot, slide, skid over the obstacle now. It also gets rid of that nails on a chalkboard sound and feeling that you get with the factory steel skids or just any of the bare metal skids, aluminum included. So it does improve that. It's, it really is a seat of the pants difference on the trail. UHMW is more abrasion resistant than carbon steel. It's impact resistant. It helps distribute all those impacts and loads from obstacles on the trail. And it's really just an all around great option if you're gonna be doing a lot of rock crawling because it makes it that much harder to get hung up or stuck. And yeah, you might get to skip out on uh, re-attempts of the same obstacle, which means you're gonna be easier on the vehicle overall. And if you're running a really long trail or a bunch of trails in a week, that abuse does add up. So those are all things to think about. And this whole skid system, it uses steel, it uses aluminum, it uses UHMW, and we're really just trying to play to the strengths of each material to bring you guys the best combination of that, to bring you the best belly skid system that we can. Alright, so the next thing I'd like to show you guys is how all of this comes together in the install process. The hardest part is doing the gas tank, but what makes it the easiest is if you do it with the least amount of gas as possible. You want the gas light on, so that way you have as least amount of weight hanging over your head as possible when you do the gas tank. You need to paint them. Paint your brackets first. You're going to notice in this video that we've got some nice shiny black spray paint on a lot of our brackets. We are looking at options to coat, zinc plate, powder coat, all of these brackets before they even get to you guys. But right now, we don't have that ability in-house, and we really don't want to stack on any more lead time than we already have. So, when you get these, these are likely going to be bare metal. In the future, these might change. Right now, do a little bit of paint prep, get some spray paint on there, or take them to your favorite powder coater down the street if you've got one before you do it. Otherwise, these steel brackets are going to rust. <laughs> So if you're starting with an entirely stock, untouched vehicle, you're going to want to grab your 19 millimeter, I'm sorry, 18 millimeter socket and pull off the factory cross members. Wet right on cue here. The next one that you're going to pull out, yeah, we, we just saved the last one for the video, uh, connects to your transmission cross member as well as both of your frame rails and that's basically your transfer case skid. We're first going to start by removing this little clip which you can see a lot better with the factory fuel tank skid here out of the way. You just want to remove that from the factory skid. On your JT all of your lines are going to be connected to the tank and to the body already. In the back current JLs are going to have some of these clipped into the factory fuel tank skid. So before you go loosening things up and removing anything beyond that point, you're going to want to make sure there's nothing connected on the back end. Now these shots are actually from an earlier uh, install on our shop JL, but uh, it's important to show this part of it. We've just got them run into the sliders on both ends, and we used a piece of bailing wire kind of fish these guys through and uh, starting at the front and kind of working your way through seems to be the best way to kind of do that. Once you've got it supported you can start pulling all of these bolts out. Uh, we were just kind of fishing them behind the bolts before to, to get them back here so that's how we're doing our skid install. This is honestly the hardest part on most of these once you've got the factory fuel tank skid out of the way, everything starts to button up pretty nice. First bracket you want to put on is this one right here. You're going to be reutilizing the factory hardware that you took out from these. So you'll be putting this, that, and what Wes has got over there. So now that we've got the factory fuel tank skid out and the fuel tank supported with the bracket in the back, 
we can go ahead and grab our new main cross member. And this guy is going to go just like so, where Wes has it up on the frame. And it too will be supporting the weight of the fuel tank at the front. This guy uses the factory hardware, and you can just loosely bolt this in place for now. Take note to not fully tighten anything or torque it down yet in this process. This is very important because we are going to be trying to get a lot of things to line up and everything is going to fit very snugly and tightly up against the next skid and adjacent part. You can go ahead and pull the ratchet straps out if you've still got those connected. So one of the little changes that we've made to this kit recently and this is a pre-production JT aluminum belly skid system. It's nearly identical to the production ones that are coming off the line right now. But one of the little changes I wanted to point out before we go installing this, putting it back on the vehicle, these little rubber caps. We've got these little jam nuts that hold onto our countersunk hardware that holds on the UHMW. And these guys just snap in place over it, just like so. So according to our install diagram, this is part number two and four right here. And it's these two brackets, and we're going to install these to the back of the skid plate, the fuel tank skid, before we go ahead and, and get this raised up. You can see Wes is installing the 3 8 inch carriage bolts from the inside facing the outside and putting the nylock nuts on the outside of the skid. So for this step, you're going to want to find a friend, you want a second set of hands to get this big long skid into place and you want to have your hardware ready. So while we were sort of wiggling that up into place, there's this factory bolt that goes into this factory bracket. And this is in the back pocket just above the lower control arm mount. And then on the drive shaft side, you wanna get this other bracket into place right here. And just be aware, your e-brake lines or cables are right here. I did have to kind of just flex that out of the way in order to get this bracket into place. So on Wes's end here, he started with using some of the supplied countersunk M12 hardware to go into the factory uh, rev nut or PEM, the factory captured hardware. So these guys are shown in the instructions uh, with a transparent cross member. But we'll show you what these guys look like going into a non-transparent cross member in real life. This guy's gonna go right about there and actually insert it from the other hole. Click it into place like so. And you can go ahead and tighten this guy down, uh, finger tight rather, and the other end of your hardware stick is actually going to remain unpopulated for right now. We're going to be using that later to attach our engine skid. So once you've got the front and the back started, you can go ahead and start populating out the rest of the hardware, both on the inside right here and out on the frame rail. If you are having an alignment issue, go ahead, move the skid around. If everything is loose, it should let you move everything into position to line up holes right now. And if this fights you at all, remember, get this one, this fuel tank skid, located off of this point first. Everything else has a slot or the ability to move. And at the very front of the fuel tank skid, on JTs and some JLs, you will have to insert a little flag nut through the frame in order to get this frontmost frame rail bolt. All right, so now that you've got your fuel tank skid in place, you can move on to the transfer case skid. And remember, however tempting it is to tighten everything down, don't do it yet. You're still gonna need some wiggle room 
in order to get the transfer case skid to mesh up with everything else. So the first step to getting your transfer case skid in is actually to remove that bolt that's holding the cross member in. Your cross member is now held in by the fuel tank skid and all of the other brackets that hold that cross member in. The reason for this is they share a bolt hole. Then you'll go ahead and reinsert that same piece of hardware. So once you've got your transfer case skid partially installed, you're gonna to wanna to come over here back to your factory transmission cross member. And if you'll remember this little hardware stick that we put on the passenger side, you'll be doing the same on the driver's side. You can insert it through the middle, have it wrap around the factory hardware, and lift the transfer case skid up to it and begin inserting the hardware. So once you've got your hardware in the front of the transfer case skid, along with this guy that is shared with the cross member that goes into the frame, you can start working your way from the back. And you'll actually want to just start with the regular hex head bolts that go through here and connect your transfer case skid to the cross member. That way you're not fighting to try and lift this thing up at the same time when you're inserting these three flush or recessed countersunk flathead bolts. So now that we've got the transfer case skid in, we can move on to the engine skid. This is a 3.6 liter JT. And you might be thinking to yourself, oh, it's got to be the same engine skid for my 3.6 liter gas JL. My 2018, my 2021. It is and it isn't. The engine skid is the same for all three models. However, there are three different sets of motor mounts. So that is why we ask when you order it, is it for a JL or a JT and what year is it? It's the oil pan, the engine, all of that is nearly identical regardless of the model. If you look at your engine mounts though, your motor mounts and the brackets that attach them to the frame, the JTs and the 2021 and up JL Wranglers are gonna look pretty much like this. The JT and the JL are not quite identical they're identical on one side, but not the other. Uh, not sure why, but if you look at the 2018 through 2020 JLs, you're actually not going to have this style of bracket right here. And we're talking about this because our engine skid ties in to the bracket as well as this bolt on either side on all models. If you've got the 2018 through 2020, it's actually going to tie into two holes that are located at the bottom rather than tying into any of the factory hardware. Now if you do have to swap these pieces of hardware out for the included longer pieces in the hardware kit, please note you're going to have to get some heat on these guys because there is a lot of thread lock on these guys from the factory. The factory wanted to make sure that these didn't come loose. We recommend that you do the same when you reinsert these. And for the same reason, because you're facing a lot of vibrations in the engine bay, that's why you're going to want to pay attention and make sure that the nylon in the nylock nut actually engages to that thread. And you can see the brackets right here. These are going to reach up to either side of those motor mounts on the frame. And that little nylon insert is what you want to be paying attention to. You want to make sure that that is fully engaged. So before you lift your engine to get into position, you'll want to very loosely install the tie-in brackets that go up to the motor mount to the very front of your engine skid. Now, depending on the model of 3.6 JL or JT that you're working on, these brackets might differ from what you see in the video here.
once the engine skid has all of the hardware in and you have double checked to make sure everything else has every piece of hardware you can go ahead and start tightening everything up So, very last step you want to do after you get this all tight, all the nuts and bolts tight, you want to drill this hole right here. We already have ours drilled already. That is going to be a half inch bit. What you want to do is you want to use the last provided nut stick, drop it in here using one of your last provided factory bolts. Slide it up, get it started just like that. Last thing you want to put on are these little brackets that are for the engine skid. So you're going to go up over the exhaust like this on both sides. And it'll sit in there just like that. So we're pretty much just wrapping things up, cleaning up in the shop. It's a little bit late. Thanks for getting everything bolted in, Wes. Not a problem. I think it's time to test it out. We need to go rock crawling. I think we need to get Casey back in the seat and see if she notices the difference. I would have to agree. We're here today to test out the skids and maybe the sliders and maybe the bumpers and maybe some other stuff. The driver. Yeah, make it look easy. Now straighten out. Beautiful. That hitch has got to get relocated. What's up everyone? This is Dan and Wes. We're at Next Venture and we're gonna do an install video. Yes we are. Okay. Everything here when you start, you're gonna to wanna to get the instructions. You can get those off our website, you can email us, you can get it off of our Google Drive. You're also gonna to wanna to get some nice liquid death refreshment. This is the Mango Chainsaw Edition. If you look at the uh, ingredients, there's not a whole lot of mango in it. Don't worry about that. It's delicious. Uh, I just want to make sure I say the right thing. You just have an old Billy? No, I did. I totally did. I didn't even say it. It's never too late to old live your Billy. dreams. Oh, Billy! <laughs> the video don't forget to like subscribe and share and hopefully we'll catch up for the next one see you guys on the trail